Glasgow is a unique city. It is interesting, it is exciting. It is the finest surviving example of a Victorian city in Europe. Its parks are splendid. Its museums and art galleries are excellent. It sits on the doorstep of some of the most magnificent scenery, not just in Scotland, but in the world. In the early 1970s, when the Prime Minister visited the city, he was conscious of these virtues. But at the same time, he was conscious of the drawbacks from which Glasgow suffered, of the poor image formulated in the early part of the 19th century, an image which Glasgow still suffers from. It was first impressions which concerned the Prime Minister in particular. The impressions given to the visitor, the industrialist, the businessman perhaps interested in investment in the city, to the tourist passing through the city, to the western coast and the western isles or to the highlands. And so in recognition of the severity of this problem, he made available a special government grant of five million pounds to cover a special program of improvement in the city. This was to run over a period of five years. It was the first attempt by a government department to recognize the severity of the problem and the first attempt and the first real opportunity to assess the impact of the external environment on the man in the street and of the man in the street on the external environment. And this goes whether you're getting up out of bed in Possel or driving a truck up from Leeds or just traveling into Glasgow by train. In the inner city, the question is not, is there a job to be done? The question is, where do we start? This is London Road, one of the major approaches to the city. Traditionally, one of the least attractive approaches. And at this particular stage in development, a very poor advertisement for the city. Amid such desolation, it seems impossible to conceive of improvement. But it's the desolation of slum claims and empty old factory shells that characterizes London Road today that makes improvement possible. The solution to the problem of the look of London Road has been greatly helped by the clearance of the old buildings. This has created space along the sides of the road which enables us to set the new building lines back and to plant trees, to screen unsightly views, or to select good views, and to use the space for car parking or pedestrian walkways. We have accepted the need to cope with freeways and urban concrete, and setting back the building line or using trees to screen the houses from the traffic are not new ideas. So we don't need a breakthrough in thinking about how to improve the look of the city. We do have to rethink our approach to improvement. The moment we accept that the city is an extension of our homes, we can begin to recapture the idea of enjoying the city and being in the city. We used to reluctantly back our buildings onto the railway, but with the change from steam to diesel and electric trains, that same wasteland has been freed and made available for improvement. The technique is the same, grassing and tree planting. And that simple solution can transform the area bordering the railway for both the traveller and the people living by the railway side. Even the great river Clyde, the river that built the city, never really belonged to the people of Glasgow. It belonged to the world. And the average Glaswegian rarely had sight of the river until now. The old wooden quay at Brumalaw, where the Irish boats traditionally tied up, is being replaced. And the quayside extended to provide a walkway by the riverside. Fortunately, the citizens will be able to walk on familiar ground. The walkway is being built with Glasgow cobblestones, the traditional floor of the city dug up from a dozen feet away and reset to form footpaths. The 
Clyde is not the only Glasgow River. On the banks of its tributary, the Kelvin, an old mill stream has been saved and the park bordering it reclaimed and re-landscaped as part of a chain of linked green walks that will crisscross the city. South of the Clyde flows the Cart. Like most urban rivers, the White Cart and its banks have been losing the fight with their surroundings. Untended and fenced off, managing to exclude everybody but the people with rubbish to dump. The new walkway that has been created on the far side of the bridge gives an indication of what is possible if time and money and energy are put to work. It's not a showpiece. It's a start in the long process of giving back the overworked rivers to the people. Like Customs House Quay, near where the city had its beginnings, where the boats used to dump sand and gravel for the building trade. When the hammering stops, the music begins. It's regarded as a facelift exercise. But the real problems are to be found not in the magnificent Victorian heart of the city, but where the people live. The postal area of Glasgow is no different from dozens of other run-down districts, not only in the west of Scotland, but throughout Britain. And the fact that it is so typical made it an ideal starting point for a pilot district plan of environmental improvement. Greater Postle covers an area of two to three square miles. There are 6,000 homes here and a population of 15 to 20,000 people, somewhere about the size of the city of Perth and yet without the same social and economic and community facilities. There is a great deal of apathy amongst the tenants here and the area has already been identified as an area of multiple economic, social and environmental deprivation. The area does qualify for the normal modernisation grants and for those for external improvement. And yet we felt additional finance was necessary. And this is why we made available part of the Special Environmental Fund to overcome the problems here. Traditionally, our building energies have gone into new houses. It was a response to a priority. But it built a flaw into our thinking about how people would want to live. If, after ten years, the district still looked good, we called it a good scheme. If it looked bad, we could always blame the tenants. Experience shows that if we limit our obligations to providing tenants with a good house, then we'll have to accept more and more areas looking like possible in the future. When these houses were first built in the early 30s and some in the late 1920s, they were considered to be the very best of their kind that Glasgow could provide. But over the years, things have declined, and as you can see, they have now gone very, very wrong. There are a variety of reasons why things have gone wrong. The main one of these appears to be the lack of money and imagination being given over to the design of the outside spaces. This has resulted in poor drying areas with muddy paths to the bin stores, downtrodden, poorly drained grass, which is now littered and strewn with refuse and here we have broken fences, fences which formerly divided the areas now leaving the tenants with no identification of their own areas. Bad places to look out in and bad places for children to play in. It is fashionable to blame the poor state of these back courts on the lack of care taken by the tenants who live in these areas. But anybody who thinks carefully about the problem is bound to realize that it's the very layer to these spaces themselves which turn against the very best efforts made by even the best of tenants to make the areas look tidy and attractive. But whether you live in a housing scheme or in one of the old centers of the city, any improvement means change and changes bring their own problems. People are not used to the idea of change, particularly when it's large and spectacular change. And yet here, at Salison Cross, right in the heart of old Glasgow, several generations have seen just this sort of change. From horses and carts, to tram cars, and now to large lorries, heavy buses, and numerous cars. However, it is hoped 
over the next few years, a massive investment of money and effort will go in to providing another type of change for the better. Right here at the Sarsen Cross, there will be areas which will be laid over with paving, streets closed off, safe places for children to play while the mothers go shopping, there will be sheltered housing for old people, there will even be seats and green trees right here at the Saracen Cross. We used to call this Wine Alley, but the biggest change here hasn't been the improvements such as the provision of drying greens, bin stores, landscape areas, shrubbed areas, toddlers play areas. The main change has been the emergence of a very strong tennis association dedicated not only to change the name, but to improve the way of life for the people of Moor Park. In the Keppel Hill area of Fossil, another community group has come together to cope with the problems of renewal. At this meeting, social workers and planners, the police, the tenants, all have their say about what kind of improvement they want and where and when. That the meetings more often air problems than solve them is a measure of the job to be done. But the hoped for radical change can only occur if the problems are honestly identified. This is the first completed back court in the Keppel area, and it's fairly typical of what is to be seen in Possel, all over Possel Park in the future. The new back courts are designed to answer obvious needs. Hard surface drying greens, toddlers play areas. It's an attempt to cope with the different demands that the housewife and her children will make on the same area. Not only have the rear courts of these buildings been modernised, but the houses themselves have also been modernised. During this time, some of the tenants have remained in their own homes, others have moved to temporary accommodation. The coordination of such a project is mammoth, ranging from central government right to the workmen on site. The public utilities, the gas board, the electricity board, the water board, all are involved. Take for instance where I now stand. This will be the responsibility of the cleansing department. I take one step forward, this is the responsibility of the parks department. The chestnut fencing is temporary. It stays until the reseeded grass has established itself. Elsewhere, by creating artificial mounds and using and grouping bushes, the toddlers are held to the paths and steps that lead to their play areas. The downtrodden muddy grass patches that helped to disfigure the old back courts existed because grass cannot survive more than 120 people to the acre. And so it has to be used where it will be least used. And the traditional needs of older kids, like kickabout pitches, provided with hard surfaces. ever asked about this project is, is it worth it or will it last? We don't have the answer to that question. It depends on the local authority departments maintaining the area and on the tenants doing their part. Right, you come up with me and watch this green bit. Keep that going, stand well done, pal. Right, where do you want the green? You want the green here? Well, you'll reach out there, will you? So remember, keep it neat, right? Uh, don't don't worry about the touching the black, wait till it dries, right? Just do what I'm doing there, right along there like that, right? right. And then just fill that in, okay? Right. Then you let any of the white come through, get rid of that white, okay? Right. When you go, you fill, you paint it. Put the paint on the floor so you don't drop it. Alright? 
Right then, we want someone else working there, don't we? You get, uh, stick, 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 watch that line up there, watch the black line. And I see some action in here, I want to see that brush going like that, right? Around the edges like that, make that colour. We'll get another colour in a minute, alright? Uh, what, we're, what we're trying to do here is, uh, because this is a new situation in Glasgow in the back courts here, and to try and stop uh, graffiti vandalism, we thought it would be a good idea if we get involved with people who live in this area to take part in it. Because after we're all finished in the area and we all go away, it's still got to be looked after. So I sort of thought I'd get the boys, you know, to do paintings, do, keep that edge there, like that, right? Keep it going, that way. So I thought I'd get them to take part in a, in a painting mural rather than just spraying it with graffiti anyway. And I wanted them to contribute to their own environment. So I got them to do murals. Now you see a helicopter and a an Indian and a cowboy and a robot further down there. Well these were done by these lines here and now we're more or less completing the wall. So we've got a complete wall, painted wall here with a sort of general design and their own individual contributions to it right along the wall here. No one is sure how the business of total environmental upgrading of a district should be handled. It has never been seriously attempted before. For the tenants waiting to be decanted into temporary accommodation, the problems of central funding or city management offer small consolation. Living for months and months on a construction site is only worth it if this new concern for the people and their homes and surroundings is an ongoing concern and does not end with the last worker on the site. I've got a, a, over here a pink elephant that I did just as a bit of a humour on these bin store roofs which are a bit dull. So I did a bin store, a pink elephant there. And uh, people, people for, looked at the window and said, oh, hello, what's going on here? People are lying, they'll think we're all alcoholics down here with pink elephants everywhere. But uh, they accepted it in quite good fun and it's now working, you know, quite well. I'm trying to get permission to paint gable ends. Well, they're not giving me permission, so I'm building my own concrete gable end and painting it myself, you know. Can't hang about waiting on people's decisions in big offices. I just do it myself. I say, right, put a concrete wall up there and I paint it anyway. So it doesn't matter what, as long as it's done. So there's, as I say, there's going to be sculpture about and uh, in different areas around the thing. Right in the city of Glasgow as well, right in the centre of the city. I was looking at a, a site yesterday for a mural, big concrete mural right in the centre of Glasgow. But this is the whole idea. Glasgow has got to be made uh, or for small consolation. Living for months and months on a construction site is only worth it if this new concern for the people and their homes and surroundings is an ongoing concern and does not end with the last worker on the site. I've got a, a, over here a pink elephant that I did just as a bit of a humour on these bin store roofs which are a bit dull. So I did a bin store, a pink elephant there. And uh, people were people for looked at the window and said, oh, hello, what's going on here? People are lying, they'll think we're all alcoholics down here with pink elephants everywhere. But uh, they accepted it in quite good fun and it's now working, you know, quite well. I'm trying to get permission to paint gable ends. Well, they're not giving me permission, so I'm building my own concrete gable end and painting it myself, you know. Can't hang about waiting on people's decisions in big offices. I just do it myself. I say, right, put a concrete wall up there and I paint it anyway. So it doesn't matter what, as long as it's done. So there's, as I say, there's going to be sculpture about and uh, in different areas around the thing. Right in the city of Glasgow as well, right in the centre of the city. I was looking at a, a site yesterday for a mural, a big concrete mural right in the centre of Glasgow. But this is the whole idea. Glasgow has got to be made the uh, Florence of the North, I feel like. <laughs> it's going to be Florence of the North. And I'm the sort of the Michelangelo of it, you know what I mean? In this new Florence, Sculpture and painting are still not the primary arts. The local art form is at least as constructive and a lot more energetic. And it has its own shrine. Every weekend, the once dilapidated Cowlairs Park accommodates 16 football teams on its own pitches. For most of them, this is a home game. And for the first time in a long time, Possel is a place worth identifying with. Come here, 
But football pitches and stone cleaning, re-landscaped parks and tree planting and grassing verges are only superficially a matter of finance. If the trees are going to be left to grow, or the walls unlettered with graffiti, then a more fundamental change is required. The problems of the Postle District go beyond the simple business of facelift. Physical improvement is only part of the job. A real opportunity now exists to improve the quality of life for ordinary people. But it needs a change in the attitude and commitment of government and local authorities and planners at least as great as the change they are expecting from the people themselves. <laughs>